We couldn't meet at a more challenging time. We are confronted with so many crises simultaneously. What does it need to master the future? I think to have a platform where all stakeholders of global society are engaged. We've got to master the future, says Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum. Man, this guy's great. And right now, as we speak, they're holding the yearly totalitarian Olympics in Davos, Switzerland, where the World Economic Forum brings in all the elites around the world and elected leaders. And Klaus Schwab, the most unelected leader the world has ever seen, that for some reason seems to lead all the elected leaders that uh, are pretty corrupt. With the World Economic Forum, here's the decisions we're going to make about how people are going to live their lives now and into the future. We have to master the future, says Klaus Schwab. Welcome to the JP Reacts channel. I get a little hyped up about anything having to do with the World Economic Forum. But given the World Economic Forum is going on this week, I wanted to hit some of the key highlights that are being generated in Davos as we speak. Before we get into those, we just have to say like, wow, these, these people gathering at the World Economic Forum, they seem like good guys, don't they? Well, of course they're good guys based on what they tell us. And uh, also we might as well just acknowledge uh, the New York Post put this up. Prostitutes charge Davos attendees $2,500 a night as sex work demand booms. So I've read other reports about the amount of sex workers, prostitutes, that these corrupt elites go through during this week in Davos, where actually sex workers, they'll actually fly in, and apparently all the sex workers are completely booked out because these honest, altruistic, good, wholesome moral elites need to bang a lot of prostitutes while they're there. Uh, also, I, I, before I get into the, the main body, we're going to take a look at something really cool. I found it interesting, and I would dare say surprising, how much Elon Musk has weighed in on calling out the World Economic Forum. Now, Elon's a billionaire, flies a private jet, richest man in the world. Yeah, he wants nothing to do with the World Economic Forum. And uh, what doesn't surprise me is that he doesn't want anything to do with them. Yeah, we've seen recently with Twitter and him releasing the Twitter files, really taking a potent stand for free speech. He absolutely has a different agenda than the agenda of the World Economic Forum. So I'm not surprised he's not into the WEF. But what I am surprised about is that he's speaking out against them. And it's a pleasant surprise. I think it's awesome. I think it's a powerful voice calling out the powerfully corrupt. Taking a quick look at some of Elon's recent tweets about the World Economic Forum. WEF is increasingly becoming an unelected world government the people never asked for and don't want. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And then here Elon is responding to Michael Schellenberger, who's talking about the World Economic Forum's ESG score, uh, stands for Economic and Social Governance. It's all about equity, equality. People get to achieve not based on merit, but based on skin color and you have the right clump of flesh stapled to your crotch. You got to ESG everything. So Elon Musk uh, had a really witty tweet, which is also, I think, based in truth. He says, yeah, the S in ESG stands for satanic. I agree. And then also pretty noteworthy. This is, as of this recording, less than a day ago, Elon put up on his Twitter this poll. The World Economic Forum should control the world, yes or no. 14% of people said yes. 86% of people said no. The World Economic Forum should not be controlling the world. And that is with, uh, let's just see, over 2.4 million people voting. And another cool metric about this is 2.4 million people voted. That's awesome. But 22.5 million people have seen this poll from Elon. Therefore, 22.5 million people have this impression, this speaking out against the World Economic Forum. And I think we need more of that. Now, I, as I was putting together, like, cool, what happened during this week at the World Economic Forum? What are the highlights? 
highlights? What are the major corruptions and devious tyrants? What did they say? What's most laughable? And what do we most need to be aware of? As I was putting together the material of this, I saw uh, a video from Tucker Carlson during his nightly open on his Fox News show. And the way he covered it and what he covered, I thought that says it very well. So I'm going to play that video from Tucker Carlson and I'll pause and react a along the way. But I just wanted to play that straightforward with you because he did such a great job, better than I could do. So let's just cut to the chase and take a look at what Tucker Carlson says. And we'll have some commentary along the way. And for the past five or six years, and we know you have been, you've probably noticed the inverted nature of modern language. Pretty much everything is precisely the opposite of what they claim it is. 1984 doublespeak, ladies and gentlemen. Anti-racism isn't anti-racism. It is, in fact, racism. So the people who tell you they're defending democracy are promoting authoritarianism, which is not democracy. Then the Black Lives Matter movement winds up killing black people. Who would have seen that coming? Then our public health authorities make the population sicker. And, and this is our new favorite, the so-called World Economic Forum seems to exist to destroy national economy. But it's the World Economic Forum, not the World Destroy Economy Forum. Called it like it is. Not an overstatement. It was the WEF, keep in mind, that told the government of Sri Lanka to give up modern fertilizer. Oh, good plan, guys. Go ahead and try it. Result? The country collapsed and people starved. By the way, that footage that is playing in B-roll on Tucker's video, those are pissed off starving Sri Lankans storming the capital and it flushed out the president or prime minister, whatever it's called, of Sri Lanka. He had to flee the country because these people were so desperate because Sri Lanka had implemented the World Economic Forum's green policy protect the atmosphere from carbon, therefore no fertilizers, which meant people are gonna starve. People start to get really willing to be non-compliant and even overthrow governments when you take away their food. Then it was the WEF that promoted Sam Bankman-Fried's historic Ponzi, <laughs> the biggest financial fraud in history. <laughs> Apparently the savants at the World Economic Forum just couldn't tell that this twitchy, pill-popping kid in cargo shorts who literally played video games during interviews was an utterly transparent scammer. They had no idea. The World Economic Forum did delete this page off their website. But he was a genius, just like them. And of course it was the WEF that predicted the COVID lockdowns would quote, quietly improve cities, not turn them into ominous hellscapes of unemployment, drug addiction, and crime. It seemed like a good plan at the time. Hey, I've got an idea. Let's prevent people from working. That'll make them rich. It'll quietly improve life for everyone. Let's prevent people from working, leaving their homes, and eating. That'll be good for the environment. Equity, we're gonna master the future. That's the World Economic Forum for you. The WEF is often described as a group of super villains, but they're also hilariously idiotic. I love that he points out that they are hilarious because they, in fact, are hilarious. Thank you, Tucker just evil, buffoonish. And by the way, they know it. They're smart enough to be embarrassed anyway. The WEF has since deleted its tweet about COVID lockdowns. It has memory hold its promotion of scammer Sam Bankman Freed. It has conveniently forgotten all about its guidance on Sri Lankan fertilizer, on which it turns out the WF is not an expert. None of that ever happened. The slate is clean. So we're ready for yet another World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos, Switzerland. The totalitarian Olympics, ladies and gentlemen. Is underway right now. The event kicked off this week with 84-year-old Klaus Schwab. He's the founder of the WEF, promising to, quote, master the future. We couldn't meet at a more challenging time. We are confronted with so many crises simultaneously. What does it need? to master the future. Does it piss you off too why every time he begins a sentence he does this? The hell, Klaus? I think to have a platform where all stakeholders of global society are engaged. He's such a robot, like he has to long pause after each sentence. Okay, go and do a new sentence. Let's get, let's get the hands going. We must master the future. <laughs> master the future. <laughs> So mastering the future is now the top item on the to-do list at the World Economic Forum this year. That's the first clue these people are not living the same life you are. By the end of this week, you hope to find some time to get an oil change or maybe pick up some dandruff shampoo at Rite Aid. At the World Economic Forum, they plan to master the future. That's the kind of people they are. How are they going to do it, by the way? Well, they're going to do it 
with John Kerry, who despite physical appearances is still alive. <laughs> Just hats off to Tucker. Like he, he's witty, he is funny. <laughs> Despite physical appearances, John Kerry is still alive. I like a good middle finger in the face of tyrants. Kerry will be 80 years old this year, so it goes without saying that if he's gonna master the future, he'd better hurry. Thankfully, he's got a plan. Watch. It's pretty extraordinary that we select group of human beings because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives, are able to sit in a room and come together and um, actually talk about saving the planet. I mean, it's so almost extraterrestrial. I think he meant to say it's so extraterrestrial. What he definitely said is it's so extraterrestrial. <laughs> is it extra testicle, John? Think about, quote, saving the planet. And if you said that to most people, most people, they think you're just a crazy tree-hugging, lefty, liberal, you know, do-gooder, whatever. And, and there's no relationship. But really, that's where we are. <laughs> so, most people don't understand, but we are a select group of human beings, John Kerry tells the attendees of the World Economic Forum, who honestly did not need to be reminded of that. People may say we're crazy, tree-hugging, liberal do-gooders, but we know the truth, which is that actually we're soulless, greed-head money worshippers who'd sell our own children to China for a big enough tax credit. Shout out to you, Larry Fink in the third row. Catch you at the Suchu Bar. Yeah, so they're actually much worse than crazy liberal tree huggers. That was John Kerry's message at the World Economic Forum, which is also effectively the WEF's credo. But then John Kerry went further. What we're doing today, he said, in saving the planet is almost, quote, extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial, to be exact. If you ever suspected these people are freaking aliens, it turns out you're right. They are. And as if to prove it, Al Gore himself showed up. At 74 years old, Al Gore is as awkward, synthetic, and weird as he has ever been since eighth grade to now. Such a perfect description of Al Gore. Which, by the way, thank God, uh, Al Gore predicted an inconvenient truth, which uh, conveniently had no truth in it. The world, you know, much of the world's going to be underwater by 2016. Is it 2016 yet, or uh, was that uh, was that eight years ago? Doesn't matter. Five years ago, to be exact. No, I'm not good at math. It's probably eight. 2016. Seven years ago. <laughs> not a very good predictor, Al. Though at this point, he's much, much richer thanks to Google stock. Ever notice how the richer people get, the more they seem like Bill Gates? <laughs> it's not your imagination. Al Gore single-handedly proves that theory. Here he was today. Look at the xenophobia and political authoritarian trends that have come from just a few million refugees. What about a billion? We would lose our capacity for self-governance on this world. We have to act. I think Al Gore and Greta Thunberg went to the same school of public speaking. And it wasn't like how to do public speaking, it's how to do public yelling at people. <laughs> Always angry, always shouting, fatter but still grumpy. <laughs> there. there. I don't know if you can hear Tucker's producers in the room laughing. That's caught on the mic. I love that. They're climate refugees now. They're climate refugees, millions of them. They're not economic migrants fleeing the squalor of Tegucigalpa for the generous social services of El Paso. No, they're not. They're climate refugees who have no choice but to risk their lives with coyotes because you drive a full-size Silverado. Illegal immigration is your fault, middle America. It's not our fault. We got nothing to do with it. We just run the world. If this is all starting to sound like- I want you to know, I love seeing Brian Stelter on camera. It makes my blood boil, but somehow I love that because he's just so entertaining, probably personifies better than anybody else, thinking people are dumb enough to believe what he says. And Tucker's gonna share in a second, Brian Stelter, he was there at the World Economic Forum leading a panel on disinformation and breaking up distrust. It's like, dude, there's no one in the media who's shared more disinformation then this guy in here, he's talking about like, here's how we got to fight disinformation. You know, what he's really talking about is here's how we have to fight the truth that is inconvenient for the narrative. Like a bad CNN segment to you, a parade of self-confident dumb people, rich in self-esteem, low in wisdom, giving moralizing lectures to one another's applause. Well, 
Let us confirm that for you. Where was Don Lamont? Why wasn't he there? Well, he wasn't. That's a next year's program, no doubt. This year, we're not making this up, America's favorite unemployed media critic, Mr. Brian Stelter, ladies and gentlemen, what? The clear and present danger of disinformation uh, is our conversation here this afternoon. It follows a session just now about disrupting distrust, and of course those are connected, so I hope that's where we can start. Uh, I'm Brian Stelter, formerly of CNN, now a fellow at Harvard University. He's a fellow at Far Harvard University. Awesome. I'm sure that's very prestigious, Brian. A reminder that the hashtag is WEF23. We can try to put some real information out into the world to make up for all the crazy. That'd be cool if Brian Stelter put real information out into the world. I'm going to keep my eyes open see if he does that. <laughs> Make up for all the crazy. The conclusion this year at the World Economic Forum is that people who are not at the World Economic Forum have too much free speech. Too many bad ideas, too much crazy. Too much free and speech. And too much opportunity to talk. They're still talking out there. Stop them before they talk some more. So if you're getting the impression that the world's most mediocre people and least self-aware people are all congregating in Switzerland this week, you are on to something. In fact, it might be worth getting an attendee list just to make certain that not a single person who was there this week ever has power over you in any way. That is a great recommendation. Find out everyone who attends the World Economic Forum, both speaker and as a like attendee showing face so they can try to win favor with this corrupt globalization, and then make sure you are incredibly non-compliant with every damn thing that person says from now into the future. Which by the way, uh, this is exactly how I feel with everything people of the World Economic Forum tell me to do. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Turns out, I will not comply. If one of these people shows up supervising the bake sale at your kid's school, call the police. They're not qualified. So with that in mind, it was interesting to see Florida Congresswoman Maria Salazar there. Maria Salazar hasn't been in Congress very long, but she has spent her time laser focused on helping foreign nationals come to this country illegally. Her own constituents, no concern. People in other countries coming here to go on welfare, oh yeah. Before Maria Salazar was even inaugurated, she posted a video on Twitter promising Nicaraguans and Hondurans in Central America that she would, quote, be there for them, to, quote, help and assist in, quote, everything the American government can do for them. Not what they might do for our country as new immigrants, how they might build the country, make it better, unite it make it more prosperous, peaceful. No, what the American government can do for people, the American government owes nothing to who are make breaking laws the American government passed. And by the way, she's elected by Americans in her congressional district to represent them. Yet she's taken a stand of, no, I represent illegal immigrants coming from other countries. Lady, you do not know the description of your job. That's Maria Salazar. She's in Davos this week, of course. And during her time in Davos, it goes without saying, she demanded amnesty for tens of millions of foreign nationals living in our country illegally. Watch. Amnesty, pandemic amnesty, just like, forget about it. We're just, we're doing amnesty here. Amnesty for illegals, amnesty for tyrannical lockdowns. Like don't ask questions, don't, like, don't ask for an apology, just amnesty, amnesty. Can we get amnesty a uh, color on the LGBTQIA plus vegan QR squared neurodivergent flag, please? Stand with Ukraine. We need to also give dignity to those people who are in the country. And those are the people that I represent. We're talking about 13, 15 million people who are most of them Hispanics, I would say 85%, who speak my language, look like me, and sound like me. She literally speaks with zero accent. No Hispanic accent, no Spanish accent. <laughs> and these people who don't sound like her at all, she's like, oh, they sound just like me. Not unless they completely got rid of their accent, lady. That are contributing with the economy of this country and they live in the shadows. So it's time to seal the border, like she said, Put order, let's see who comes in and who doesn't, and then turn around and give dignity. That doesn't mean path to citizenship, that means to include them and make them dignified members of our community. Which by this, such a vague statement, include them 
and give them dignity. Just hollow, abstract words that mean nothing. And usually, in my experience, that's a smokescreen for, we're going to do some pretty unconstitutional stuff. Just like Klaus Schwab, he's always talking about global initiatives. It's like, yeah, you literally said nothing with all those words. Talking with your hands, Klaus. Let's go on. Millions of people who look like me. Don't you love it when white people <laughs> pretend that the people streaming across our border look like me? Sorry, Maria Salazar, you are whiter than I am. So <laughs> knock it off. It's false. I'm you are whiter than I am. <laughs> By the way, you don't represent foreign nationals in the United States here legally. You represent Americans because you're a representative of the American government. Donald Trump went to the economic forum in Davos some years ago and made it really clear that he rec represents, as the American president, Americans, not people from foreign countries living in the United States illegally. Now, a person who claims to be in his party is making exactly the opposite claim. Marie Salazar has been on this show before. We'd love to have her on again. That offer remains open always. I'd love to see that. And with that said, my friends, I want to share a special World Economic Forum offer I've got going on. I'll throw it to my colleague JP in just a second. But for now, I want to say for everybody at the World Economic Forum, I have two sentiments. One is, I love pissing on the dreams of tyrants with my liberty. The second sentiment is, I will not comply. Hey there, my friends. Before you go, I want to celebrate. It is that time of year again when the elites and all the elected leaders of our world gathered at the World Economic Forum in Davos, which is pretty much the uh, tyrant Olympics. So they're trying to decide how you and I are gonna live our lives. I'm glad that they're doing this. I'm glad they're delusional enough to think they can control us. And I wanna know exactly what their plans are because I like to know exactly what dreams of tyrants to piss on with my liberty. Now, during this time when they're gathering and, you know, telling us you should eat crickets while they eat filet mignon and caviar, I think we have one of two choices. You can either become more obedient or more brave. And in response to the World Economic Forum, I'm running a special sale on two special designs, which I think are the appropriate response for the World Economic Forum. The first design is pissing on the dreams of tyrants with my liberty. And the second design is telling the World Economic Forum exactly how obedient we will be with their plans for how we're gonna live our lives. If you'd like to check out either of these designs during special World Economic Forum week, you can use the discount code WEF at my website for 20% off. That's awakenwithjp.com. Discount code WEF for 20% off. Good through the end of January. Suck at World Economic Forum. I left my car running just because I can. <laughs>